Hi, my name is Justin Sears. I'm Product Marketing Manager at Hortonworks. We're here for a brief product tour of Apache Hadoop 2. In this video, you'll learn how Yarn changed Hadoop between version 1 and version 2. I'm joined here today by two people, Arun Murthy, one of the original architects on Hadoop. Welcome, Arun. Thank you. Glad to be here. Arun um, was on the team that started working on, on Hadoop in the beginning, so he's been working on Hadoop for about eight years. He's also one of the co-founders of Hortonworks. And more recently, uh, uh, Arun wrote the, the Apache Software Foundation JIRA ticket, MapReduce 279, that contained the core idea for YARN, which is part of the recent release of Hadoop 2. I'm also joined by Rohit Bakshi, who's a product manager at Hortonworks. Rohit is responsible for YARN, HDFS, high availability, disaster recovery, and he also manages our relationship with Microsoft. Welcome. Great to be here. Thanks. And let's talk about how YARN changed Hadoop between version 1 and version 2. Why don't you get us started, Arun? Sure. Um, if you looked at uh, Apache Hadoop a couple of years ago, um, Apache Hadoop consisted of two main components. It was HDFS to store data and then MapReduce to process the data. Um, HDFS has always been a very general purpose distributed file system, which meant you could store data of all sorts in HDFS, whether it was text or binary or structured or unstructured. As we thought through how we could make Hadoop more general purpose, the answer was sort of staring at us in the face. Um, the answer was to say, we're going to split apart the resource management aspect of MapReduce from the user-facing framework, which is the application level. API. So the way we did that was to take um, the, all the experience we had running MapReduce at scale and take it and build it into a new new project we call Apache Hadoop Yarn. And Apache Hadoop Yarn is now one of the you know three stool three, three legs of the stool, which is Apache mm -hmm. Hadoop, uh, along with HDFS and MapReduce. And Yarn becomes the system on which you can run not only just MapReduce but also other applications, whether it's um, Apache Tis for interactive queries, Apache Storm for real-time event processing, Apache Giraffe for graph processing, and so on and so on. One of my you know, favorite analogies with Yarn is, if you go back to Hadoop 1, Hadoop had, um, I would loosely say, an operating system to run applications, but there's only one application. Mm -hmm. So it was sort of equal to having Microsoft Windows with only Notepad and Kind of worse yet, it, it was like having the, the operating system and the application fused together mm -hmm. into one big ball. So with Yarn, we all obviously separated out. What it means now is that we can run different applications like Notepad or uh, PowerPoint or Word or whatever it is on the same base layer. That's you know Yarn, which is sort of analogous to Windows. And Rohit, tell us about some of the the opportunities with this change in architecture. Absolutely, Justin. I mean, it enables a range of possibilities. So when an enterprise thinks about Hadoop 2 and HTTP 2 versus HTTP 1, they can now plan to have one cluster that grows over time, one cluster where they store all their different types of transactional data coming in, new forms of data, clickstream, log data, all in the one HTFS cluster that Arun was talking about. And once, you know, once they have all that data in there, they can enable a data lake where they have different types of applications that are all leveraging Yarn that Arun and team built. Um, and leveraging Yarn to be able to schedule processing in that one cluster on top of all the data available in that enterprise data lake. And that's the real opportunity, is that you now no longer have to plan around having multiple different small clusters in your, in your data center because you want to separate out and run different types of applications. The real value mm -hmm. here is that you have one platform and you have multiple applications sitting on top of that same platform accessing the same data, interacting, and pushing down, processing, and exchanging data between the different applications. That's the real opportunity. And Arun talked about the different applications. We're, we're really seeing a booming ecosystem of applications. And what, what are some of those applications? Maybe that's where you were going. Yeah, so some of those applications. So we have you know, streaming, storm. You have interactive query with Hive and Thaze. You have um, graph processing on top of data sitting in HTTP. So Giraffe is an Apache project that does that. Um, you have the ability to run HBase and run um, MapReduce processing all in the same cluster. So you have all these different applications that are being formed that take advantage of Yarn. If you step back and look at the life cycle of data that you're having in your, in your you know, data center, um, you're getting data from all sorts of um, you know, 
sensors, you're getting data from uh, you know, your cell phone towers, you're getting data from your log files, and so on and so on. Even before you store data into HDFS, you want to look at certain patterns or anti-patterns in that data. Uh, we've got customers on Wall Street looking for fraud detection. If you use a credit card from California and 30, you know, two minutes later somebody uses it from um, Europe, there's something wrong. We've got customers in telecommunications who have use cases where as you move from cell phone to uh, cell phone tower to another one, if you suddenly start dropping a lot of packets, suddenly a lot of cells, uh, cell phones start dropping packets, you want to quickly identify that um, faulty cell phone tower and then optimize, try to you know fix that quickly. So if you look at the entire lifecycle data from real time to interactive to batch, you want one platform to both store and, and do all the processing in it, which is where the combination of Yarn and HDFS2 is such a key you know, mm -hmm. game changer for the enterprise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the enterprise can work with their data from the second it's generated and still work with it five years later or in an algorithm later. that they've Absolutely. developed and, yep. and continue to store yeah. it. Yeah. And, and, the, and the key benefit of having data forever is that you can always go back in time, change your hypothesis, and see how your idea or insight would compare, you know, five years from now or ten years mm -hmm. from now. Mm -hmm. And depending on the depending on the skill set or depending on the type of type of access and query, that's a great you have different point. options, right? Absolutely. You have Hive, you have ad hoc analytics, you have SAS that's coming out with yeah. um, analytics running on top of Yarn. You have all these different avenues and query patterns that mm -hmm. your business analysts, your data scientists, your ETL developers can all utilize in the same cluster. And that's that's pretty powerful. Rohit brought up a great point about skill sets. The different parts of the enterprise have different kinds of um, skill sets, right? There, if you go to the Valley, you've got people who want to, you know, code and program um, using a DSL like Pig or, or Cascading. Uh, but if you go to the enterprise, you have people who want to use SQL because SQL is sort of the lingua franca of the enterprise. So the fact that we can do all of these things within the same platform and go beyond, you know, just batch processing with MapReduce, whether it's real-time event processing with Storm or interactive query with Hive and Tiz, it's it's really, you know, it's a really compelling platform mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. um, from both a functionality perspective, you can do stuff that you couldn't do before at scale, mm -hmm. and also from a cost perspective because you know it's it's commodity hardware and open source software. Mm -hmm. Now with Hadoop two and HTTP two, you can scale out your capacity and processing. So you can also scale out the types of applications. So mm -hmm. with the abstraction in Yarn, Yarn taking care of the resource management and cluster utility, um, you can start with Hive and Pace. And then over time, as you start maybe getting data scientists into your organization, you can start looking at analytical tools that are built on top of Yarn and bring that in as a new application. You don't have to get that all figured out when you're starting off with your Hadoop cluster. And that's, that's the difference. You don't have to plan out and say, I need these machines because I'm going to use this specific set of processing, and that's my end game forever. So you can learn work. and grow with your Hadoop cluster. You can cluster. learn and grow. Yeah. And, and, and through the work on Yarn and HDFS2, it's more flexible. So you can now enable someone to make a decision two years down the lane to use their Hadoop cluster in a slightly different way than they were when they started. And that's what's changed. That, key, that technical abstraction has changed where you're not tied to what you mm -hmm. want to do from your Hadoop cluster. It's become more of a general mm -hmm. platform. The fact that you have a, a base common layer, which is Yarn, means that you can train your um, you know, your, the folks in your, in your organization to manage and monitor Yarn, mm -hmm. and you can easily bring on top newer applications on, on, on Yarn mm -hmm. as you see fit, mm -hmm. you know, years from now, two years from now, three years from now. Um, but the base platform is still Yarn. You get SLAs, you get security, you get um, predictable uh, latencies and so on, mm -hmm. and that's really important as you try to scale, you know, your usage of you know, any big platform, which is, you know, similar to Hadoop. Yarn really thinks of resource management as a first class um, feature in the platform, whereas MapReduce was much more limited and much more restrictive. We've seen studies from Yahoo which show they're, they're running, you know, 130, 150,000 applications per day mm -hmm. on their, you know, large four or 5,000 node clusters. Mm -hmm. And that, if you, go, if you go back, you know, 12 months, it, they were, you know, topping out at about 60 to, 60 to 70,000 applications mm -hmm. per day. So the fact that Yarn gives you that base component and, and resource management infrastructure at the base layer means that you can actually now write much more efficient applications on top. And, and now obviously MapReduce itself is much more efficient mm -hmm. on Yarn. And some of, that, uh, some of that's because 
you no longer have slots in MapReduce. Yeah. You don't have MapReduce um, processing units reserved on different nodes. In Hadoop 1, I uh, used to think of every machine as being segregated into map slots and reduce slots, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. which meant that we've seen a number of cases where the map slots would be full and the reduce slots would be empty and vice versa. And now with Yarn, there's no segregation of resources into one kind or the other. Everything is fungible resources mm -hmm. that you can use for map reduce, for maps reducers, or you can use for Storm, or you can use for edge base, whatever it is, right? The fact that you have that layer of level of flexibility, but with strong isolation and security and guarantees and so on. And what are some <laughs> specific examples of a customer that's using 1.0 and the things that now they are looking forward to doing incrementally yeah. in, in 2? Do yeah. you have any examples of that? So, First off, when we talk to customers and they're looking at going, you know, one of the biggest things is backward compatibility, right? And the enterprise is moving their production applications, their production data, and moving to HTTP2. In that regard, with HDFS being the, the base of the data storage and MapReduce being available on top of Yarn, backward compatibility is just built into the framework, into that, mm. into the platform. That's great. So when some, when a company, you know, companies go and they have all this data, they have t petabytes of data stored in HDFS, they can do an in-place upgrade where they go from uh, what a 200 node cluster of HTTP 1.3, let's say, they want to go to HTTP 2.0, they just keep their data in place, they keep the metadata in place, and they just do an upgrade in place. With their applications, so people have written pig jobs, hive jobs, people have written MapReduce jobs, all those applications um, are backward compatible with Hadoop 1 and Hadoop 2. And so it's, it's really nice to be able to help our customers go and make that change from Hadoop 1 to Hadoop 2 to take advantage of all the benefits that Arun was talking about, all the exciting new possibilities and new frameworks and new applications, but maintain what they've been doing. In terms of net new use cases, what we're definitely seeing is uh, event processing, real-time event processing mm -hmm. is big. Um, th th there's been a lot of excitement around the Stinger initiative that mm -hmm. we've had. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a number of customers doing beta testing at this point, and mm -hmm. really, really, really happy with the um, interactivity of you know Hive and SQL uh, in Hadoop. So I would say a combination of um, Storm and, and Stinger, uh, plus obviously Bash with MapReduce, that's not going to go away, um, is kind of the, it, it's the early sort of uh, view into what I see as we talk to customers. Mm -hmm. But it's also, you know, things people, you know, as you mature and understand your Hadoop, um, you know, deployments, Things like Hoya, which is a way we manage edge base, and you know, even Accumulo through Yarn, these things are going to get more and more interesting uh, over the course of the next 12 months. Arun and Rohit, thank you so much for spending the time talking about uh, Yarn and HDFS and, uh, and Hadoop 2. Very exciting, um, and I can tell you guys are excited about it. And I want to thank you for joining us. You can follow all of the upcoming improvements that we mentioned today by going to our website, hortonworks.com. We have pages on Yarn, HDFS, and we also have um, our blog there, and we will be updating you about improvements, Yarn, HFS, and Core Hadoop throughout on our blog. And then finally, follow us on Twitter. That's where you can get minute-by-minute uh, -minute alerts on anything that posts to our blog, and so you'll know about any changes that we're making to Hadoop or Hortonworks as soon as we make them. Thank you for joining us.